Hierarchies are perhaps the biggest and most foundational of all the uh, access structures. Uh, you'll hear hierarchies called a number of things, or rather there's a number of things that are in general usage, a number of kinds of objects in general usage that really are summarized or um, couched better by the term hierarchy. Um, taxonomy, we've talked about that in the past. The idea of a taxonomy really is a hierarchy. Outline, of course, anything that's an outline really is a hierarchy. It's usually a hierarchy of topics or subjects, but a hierarchy nonetheless. Table of contents, we'll talk a little later about tables of contents and how tables of contents are hierarchies as well. So that's a hierarchical concept. A nested list or a nested tree or really any kind of tree is a hierarchy. Um, a nested list is a hierarchy and we've talked about nesting where one thing is inside another. That's a hierarchical, con hierarchical concept. And finally, from the world of programming, the idea of a class structure or an object model is also a hierarchical concept. Those are all hierarchical concepts. Those are all ways of saying hierarchy in, in other terms. And what I'd like to work with you on is the idea of a hierarchy that can span all of those different concepts and give you insight into all of those concepts, but also provide you with a means to create your own kinds of hierarchies that serve particular needs. So let's talk most fundamentally about uh, what a hierarchy represents. In classical terms, we put hierarchies around things in order to classify them, and I think probably the word classification really is, uh, it, it's not necessarily a hierarchical term, but its usual meaning really is a hierarchy. We put things in categories and subcategories, and we keep breaking those categories and subcategories down in order to properly name something, in order to give it its most uh, definitive definition. We put it inside of some sort of hierarchy and we classify it that way. And as I say, a classification doesn't have to be a hierarchical classification, but generally when we think of categories, when we think of classifying things, when we think of categorization, we think in terms of a hierarchy and that, um, that parent and child structure. Of course, that is the fundamental feature of a hierarchy, is that it has parents and it has children and that the children are somehow within the parents. They somehow inherit from the parents. Now, of course, that brings us to probably what is the foundational uh, human mode behind hierarchy, and that's the family. The family structure that we all belong to, the structure of any species really is a hierarchical structure where the children, the descendants, right? Those are all words bar borrowed directly from, um, from human relationships. The parents, the children, the grandchildren, the descendants, the ancestors, those are all concepts that bear on any kind of hierarchy but are derived from the interpersonal hierarchy of human experience. So the fundamental construct, the fundamental organizing principle of a hierarchy is that the children are somehow related to the parents. And the best way, I think, to think about that is how are you related to your parents? You carry their, you carry them forward. You further refine them. You're derived from them. They are part of the definition of you. If you wanted to know about somebody, you would ask about their family, and that would tell you a lot about them. Why? Because you assume that they play out somehow those things that are in the, in the hierarchy above them, in their ancestry. Right? And so that's why we believe that a hierarchy is, is a, as a form of relationship, is some form of classification, because we believe that the children bear some resemblance. Now, it's not an identity with the parents, it's a resemblance. And I think the idea of inheritance is very, is very useful here. The children inherit qualities from the parents, but they also augment those qualities. They also refine those qualities. They also restrict some of those qualities and enhance others of those qualities. So that's the philosophical, the kind of the, you know, the existential, what is a hierarchy and what's its fundamental capacity. Uh, but really the way it's been used in history is this classification idea that I brought up, the idea that we have categories and subcategories, and by putting a thing, an object, an item in one of those categories inside of categories inside of categories, we've somehow defined it. And I think the way that we've defined it is exactly that way. It inherits from its ancestry. It takes on certain qualities of its ancestry. It has common characteristics with its ancestry, but yet it refines them. And in another sense, it, it's a more detailed idea. So the, uh, the, uh, the, the idea behind a hierarchy is that the higher categories are more general and the lower categories are more specific. The lower categories make use of the properties of the higher categories and further refine them, further specify them, further detail them, give them more flesh, give them more substance. 
So that's what a hierarchy represents. That's kind of how it functions. That's its main idea. But uh, what is it used for? What's the what, what's the, the the method? I mean, that that the definition I've given so far really could be any hierarchy from a parent-child structure and human relationships all the way to a table of contents. So let's talk a little bit more specifically about how an end user sees a hierarchy. Think about a book. What's the classic hierarchy that represents a book? A book has a hierarchical navigational structure. What's it called? Table of contents. Right? The table of contents is a hierarchical navigation structure that we have on a printed book. And what can you learn from that table of contents? When do you go to the table of contents? When is it obvious that the table of contents is where you should be? And the first thing to think about there is, well, when I don't know exactly what's in here, then I want to go to the table of contents. The table of contents, that hierarchy, is going to give me a very comprehensive overview of everything that's in there. We somehow believe that the small amount of information represented in that outline, represented in that table of contents, is an adequate descriptor of the large bulk of information. A book can be many thousands of pages long and the table of contents can be as, as short as you know, a few lines. And somehow we believe that that table of contents is telling us what's in there. So the fundamental access or user need question that a hierarchy can answer is, what's in here? What's the range? What's the domain? Along with that comes the, comes the comment that people expect those hierarchies to be comprehensive. They expect when they see a hierarchy that there's not wide parts of the, of the information space or the info base left out of that hierarchy. We make this assumption that those hierarchies are comprehensive. And the main question that they can answer, the best question they can answer is what's in here? I have this idea and I want to see if my idea could possibly be in this information base. And then from there, what's the trail? What's the, the trail from my general concept to the very specific question that I have. How can I go from a general phraseology of what I'm trying to find in this info base down to the very specific answer to the question that I came here to, to address? Uh, uh, a hierarchy is extremely good at organizing a lot of information and putting it in very few clicks, putting it in a, in a, in a or organizing it in such a way that you can get to massive amounts of information with very little activity. And so there's some questions at the end of this topic that address that particularly, but let me just say that uh, if you have thousands and thousands of items, they're organized under a very few branches of information, and clicking just down through a very few branches of, of, um, of that hierarchy, that outline, can get you very quickly to the information you want. Of course, if you make a wrong turn, you may never get to the information you want. So hierarchies, while they're extremely effective at organizing information, um, can be extremely frustrating as well. And I'm sure you've had this, this, uh, this uh, experience of clicking around through the hierarchy of a website, getting completely lost, getting completely dumbfounded, going down all sorts of wrong trails, and getting really, really frustrated and reaching for what? Search. Because you know that search, as opposed to putting everything in its proper location, putting everything in its right place, will find things no matter where they are. And so there's a real dichotomy there between the hyper-organization, but very specific methodology behind the hierarchy and the hyper unspecificity of a search function which which you want to believe anyway will find anything no matter where it is okay so there's another big function of a hierarchy and I think um, if you search your brain for how you've used the table of contents in a book um, you'll realize that this is a major function of hierarchies and that is to give you a perspective on what the experts, the people who created this info base, believe the right terminology is. You'll never find alternative expressions. You'll never find end user terminology if it's not the terminology of the system. The hierarchy we, we suppose is giving us the proper names of things. Not just any old name, but the proper names of things. So it, it puts a, a, a conceptual or a semantic framework around the information. It's another very important function. If I want to know how, to, how is something called, how do I use the language of this, um, of this discipline, I'll look at a hierarchy because that will give me a very quick and comprehensive view of the proper way to think about this information.